Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, Nine Motor Gang, and today I'm going to be breaking down the buddy hang uh, that we have on the Jayhawk robots right here. So we didn't actually buddy hang in any of the competitions, but we do have it working in practice, so I'm kind of going to go ahead and show that off. Uh, I'm recording this right after Mecha Mayhem because we are going to be dismantling this robot uh, to build something new, and we're ditching the buddy hang for a number of reasons, mostly being it's not really strategically viable at this point, it's not strong enough. And additionally, I have something else really funny that I want to build that I think will be cool and probably cooler than Buddy Hang and worth even more points. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm, and let's get into it. So first of all, the first stage of the Buddy Hang is, this is our tier two claw. Um, we have a tier three claw, or at least we did. It's now disassembled. I'll kind of put some pictures up there. Mainly we ditched that because tier three claw, just getting it to latch onto the ladder was extremely difficult. Mainly, you can see, we kind of had this little latch right there that we were trying to get onto, and we tried a bunch of different locking clamp things. I wasn't responsible for most of that, so I'm not exactly sure all the details that went into that, uh, but I know that the rest of the team couldn't get that working. So we kind of had ditched it and went for a tier two hang that would then latch onto the top of these bars right here. Um, you can kind of see over there. So it kind of latches on right there and can pull up both robots above there for a tier two buddy hang. So back over here, the first stage is we're deploying the claw. Basically, yeah, it just, it's very tight. Um, it's spring-loaded, those are quadruple-banded. Basically, you just kind of tuck it in, and it's stable, well, stable enough to pass inspection and start the match, but as soon as you move it all, it just, like, springs out everywhere. Yeah, basically, you can just kind of see it's, like, it's caught on, like, a little piece of tubing right there, so, like... Any amount of movement is just going to get that to deploy. I think it deployed an autonomous in most of our matches at Mecca. So then from here, now we have a claw, um, and you can see the standoffs under it, which we kind of used to latch on. And this is also just kind of nice for, like, goal control and driving around and, like, protecting the positive corner, which you do at the beginning of the match. And now this robot, in order to hang, can kind of drive itself up against the wall, and he's just going to stay there for now. Now, moving on to the 24-inch robot, we have our lifted intake, which, I mean, we used to score wall stakes. Um, I'll put up a clip of that real quick. But additionally, it can also go back even further. And now it's at like 90 degrees. If we go back any further, it would start to expand out the back of the robot and be illegal. So now the intake is just kind of like hinged. Um, you can kind of see that. So the intake is just mounted on like rubber links right there, which is really scuffed, but it's the only way that we could find to get the degree of flexibility we needed. Um, because this intake can fold all the way back inside the robot like that. And we didn't really have any room to put like a screw joint mount just because of how we didn't want to make this any wider than it already is because it's already pushing uh, 24 inches. So this works and the intaking on it works pretty well. As you can see there. So like, it's not like it really was a big hindrance and the side to side motion, um, it has the motors right there. So it really can't move side to side that much. You can see that the ring kind of gets up in there. So the ring gets stopped by these rubber links and it just goes up this first part of the ramp right there, which is quite simple. And then when we raise this up and then we drive in, now the robot can drive up the same ramp that the rings use to intake. So you can see this fits snugly. Um, the inside of this robot, which is part of the reason the x is so wide, is about 10 and a half inches. And this robot is about 10.2 inches wide. So it's a bit of a tight squeeze, but you can see it lines up nicely right there. So now that the lift is up, um, we can go ahead and combine the robots and these pieces right here, which are just little standoffs that are kind of into this 3D printed gusset, just kind of going through there, are connected uh, to the cylinders and these cylinders are out. So the, right now these standoffs are being pulled. So they're like pretty much flush up against the thing. Same thing on the other side over there. Now, one of the reasons that we did end up ditching this is this is quite a complicated driving maneuver to pull off. Um, I don't think anyone else on Jayhawk at the time to practice this. So what we want to do is we want to line up using the X-Drive, which is part of the reason we originally went with this design, the other one being that I like X-Drive. Um, and then you can kind of line up with the 24-inch robot and kind of slowly drive into it. And now the 15-inch robot can slowly drive backwards. 24-inch robot keeps applying pressure. It's quite hard to do this with just one person driving. There you go. And then you can see we can kind of get the 15-inch up like that and then 24 inch kind of rams it into the wall. Um, but as you can see, the 15 inch robot is not really down on the ground. You can see those, those wheels. Um, so right now the whole thing can kind of just like sway. Well, it's up against the wall. Let me back that up real quick. Um, it's not really secure. It can kind of like 
move around a bunch. So the way that we do that is, this is my favorite part of the robot, we can lower the 24 inch lift. This is kind of just like there, and then we can activate the hooks and it pretty much just pulls it right down, um, which I love that part. Now we can ram into the wall again. And now if you look at these right in here, you can see they are nicely over top of it and I can go ahead and activate these. And it barely catches, um, but it's enough that now the 15 inch robot, if it tries to go up, um, it is going to get caught on these. And it's doing the same thing on the other side over there. You can kind of see that part right in there. And again, those are just like cylinders running under the robot connected. Um, it's kind of a scuff system, but those were kind of added last minute because uh, originally they were just supposed to kind of hang off the intake, which I'll kind of put a video up of what happened before we added those. Um, so they were very much needed if we wanted the 24 inch robot to stay hanging on. And then its other point of contact is just this kind of C-channel bar right there. Uh, we can drive around the field as much as we'd like. And this guy is pretty secure. So we now have combined our two robots into one. And that is the other reason we went with the 12 motor on the X-Drive is because this thing is extremely heavy. Um, like you can see my Excel isn't even great on this. And this robot has an insane amount of torque. Um, because this is just, it's very heavy. Um, I think it weighs about 35 pounds in total, the entire assembly. Um, also, we can hang with a mobile goal at the back. So I could just have a MOGO back there. Let me go do that real quick. Yeah, so we can just pick up a MOGO. Ideally, we would already have it filled before we go went ahead and grab the 15-inch robot. But yeah, now we have a MOGO back there too. Ideally, we would be doing all of this before the last 30 seconds started. And now we can start the very long process of raising up our linear lift. Now, this is made out of VEX slides, which I would not recommend um, simply because VEX slides suck. We were unable to order any commercial off-the-shelf slides because... By the time we realized that we needed this equipment, it was too late to order it because taking an order from KU, by the time that you tell KU you need to order it and the time it arrives is usually two to three months. So there was no way that we were actually going to get slides in time. So we we're just using VEX ones. Uh, this was one idea one of the other teammates had. And we just kind of have some spacers up there. Those are the thin ones off of RoboSource. Um, originally, those were standoffs because we didn't get those until much later. And now you can see inside of here, we have a winch. And that is also covered in standoffs. This was done last minute because we ran out of 3D printer filament. But basically we have some standoffs and over at this end, we have like six standoffs, one wrapped around each side. Uh, that way the standoffs kind of nest with each other. But as we move down here, there's less standoffs because uh, the, some of the standoffs are longer. Like I believe that's a four inch one, but like those are only like a three inch standoff. And I think we have a two inch standoff in there somewhere too. So that actually means that this winch has a smaller diameter effectively as you go further over which our pivot point or our first spot that we're pulling to is over there. This is a continuous lift. Um, so that's kind of pulling it over to there. So the string starts off wrapping around there, which means it's wrapping around more, um, which is a larger diameter winch. So it's wrapping up faster. And then by the time you get over there, it's wrapping up slower. So it has more torque. And that's kind of the same thing I used on my slingshot design for spin up. So now we can start the long process. We didn't really have time to tune this because like I said, we ran out of 3D printer filament. So ideally we were gonna do something that was kind of like a cone shape that was 3D printed and it was all very nice and clean, but that didn't end up working. So basically it's just gonna take its time. Um, this is something we would definitely wanna fix as right now it takes about 20 seconds to go up all the way. And then that's done. So you can kind of see right there, um, it's up all the way and it is leaning forward a bunch, but that actually doesn't really matter because now we can go ahead and drive over to the ladder. Um, it's just kind of crazy. It's a lot of fun to drive, but basically it's a big robot. Now what we're going to want to do is line up with one of these corners and this robot can climb from any corner. Um, and basically you can see we're nesting around there. And originally, like I said, we had a claw design that would then latch onto that nut right there, but this one doesn't actually need to. So we didn't get to this part figuring out the exact timings just because we never got around to it. Um, but the next most important thing to do is we have to unwind this string all the way. So let me go ahead and do that because if you start lowering the claw, before you unwind the string, then uh, bad stuff happens. That used to be one spacer. Uh, we bent a lot of standoffs. Let me put up some pictures of those. So this kind of just unwinds. And this is our biggest holdup for climbing. Uh, the 
PTO actually didn't take very long in and of itself in order to climb. It was mostly the time that it took to unwind the winch, which we could be climbing as we do, but we didn't want to risk accidentally bending any more standoffs. And now you can see, and we have that automated so it unwinds back to its original position. You can see all the strings kind of unwound and it's now no longer wrapped up around there. And we don't really have any issues with this because at this point in time, we're not driving anymore. Now, next part is we need to now lower. And as you can see, that kind of latched on quite nicely. Um, now at this point, um, we would go ahead and activate the PTO, um, which I'll put up a video of that real quick. So as you can see, that works quite nicely, but I realize um, we don't actually have the gears attached onto the bottom of the drive base on this side. So I'll be unable to show this off completely. Um, you can see on the other side, you have like a 12 tooth gear and that's connected to the main drive base wheel. So as I spin, you can see that is spinning. Now when we just engage the PTO, um, we just kind of drive a little bit. And now you can see that gear is now connected to the main shaft and that's geared for torque. So that's spinning at 150 RPM. Um, now, again, this isn't going to have enough torque to climb properly because we don't actually have this side of the drive base attached. Now, at this point in time, we can basically just start winding this up by driving forward. And that's just kind of going to spool up however it wants to around that winch. Um, torque was not an issue with this. It was the gear skipping, um, which recently started becoming a problem only later into the tournament after we've been using these for a while. Initially, one other thing I kind of want to mention are these sliders. These are just like metal one buys that were bent. Um, so you can see this one acts as like a rider. Um, in order to go up against this black part here. And then these kind of act as side guards to stop it from twisting around too much. And that is to help it get over these lips right here. You can see our ladder is a bit bruised from uh, when we didn't have these and we were just trying to brute force our way up and over. So th these are pretty simple. You just kind of have them sticking out the front and that makes a smooth surface to slide up. Originally it used to just be poly and it like snapped into three or four pieces. So now we just use steel there because it's just a small piece and it's already still pretty deformed. This is where we start to lift up the 24 inch robot. You can kind of see um, over in there. That standoff is getting caught on the top of the C. Oh, yeah, you can see that standoff is getting caught on the top of the C channel. Um, so now we'll be starting to lift the 24 inch robot. And now since that other side of the drive base isn't engaged, um, it's not going to have enough torque to uh, properly lift up the robot. So I'll go ahead and put a video overlay up in front of this. So this right here is back when we still had the claw that went all the way up to tier three. So on this one, the 15 inch robot would get all the way to a tier three hang and the 24 inch robot would either get a tier one or tier two hang. The main issues with this is obviously we hadn't added the things yet to help the 24 inch grab onto the 15 inch robot yet. So it was sagging a ridiculous amount. And finally, this claw that grabbed onto the top of the ladder, it wasn't 100% consistent. It was probably 95% consistent, which for most things like scoring rings, that's probably fine. But when the 5% happens here, instead of missing a point, your robot falls and a bunch of stuff bends, um, which is why the top stage of the 15 inch robot was actually made out of steel. And then this next part right here is our tier two hang that we had for Mecca. We're just trying to get to double tier two. And that's kind of all that this claw does. It was consistent, but again, it just wasn't fast enough. I think this is pretty much going to be it for uh, Jayhawk this season. I was hoping to have some more time to get this working before Worlds, but I'm pretty sure at this point in time, unless a miracle occurs, Jayhawk's not going to be at Worlds, um, mostly due to some members' conduct at Purdue. Additionally, nobody else on the team really does a ton, and I don't feel like doing all the work myself in preparation for Worlds, so there's that as well. But at this point, it is what it is. Um, just, you know... A little bit frustrating. Thanks again for sticking around to the end of the video, though, because it really does help out. I'll probably still be working on the 24-inch robot and take it to some scrimmages before Worlds, so I'll have some stuff from that that I'll be uploading in between now and whenever the new game comes out. And then, of course, when that comes out, I'll have a ton of content in regards to that. But, uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around to the end. Um, it does help out the channel a lot, and... Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.